Good Tuesday morning, everybody, from the First Defense Doppler 3 Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the latest edition of News Channel 3's video weather blog, Weather Overtime. If you'd like to know more about this, drop by and uh, drop me a note at austin.onik at wreg.com. We're going to forego some of our usual things that we talk about this morning in interest of saving time for a few other things going on, most notably Matthew, which is a dangerous and very powerful hurricane, just made landfall this morning in and around the area of Haiti and if you notice on the left hand side of your screen right there we have another Hurricane Hunter aircraft that has been flying through the storm about ready to come in from the southwestern side of things very close to Jamaica at this point and will be making its way back up into the storm to see what goes on into the course of the next few days. We are also going to talk a little bit more about the lack of rainfall here in the Mid-South and causing some problems into the area where it comes to wildfires. We had a very dry September. It's been a very dry October to date and until we get some rainfall we could be looking at the possibility of some isolated wildfires becoming a lot more widespread out there which means a cigarette butt tossed from the car could start a major conflagration out there so please keep that in mind. Temperatures today again not really looking at too much in the way of nice October numbers normal for this time of the year is lower 80s about 80 degrees or so upper 70s lower 80s somewhere in there and we're going to be going well beyond that as we go into later on this afternoon with temperatures going back into the mid to upper 80s by the time the kids get out of school partly to mostly cloudy skies off and on through the day mostly sunny at others but once again no rainfall expected anytime soon. Taking a look at some of the cameras out there from the weather underground system at Rhodes College. Temperatures early this morning as we record this update. Mid 60s with a few high thin clouds drifting on through. Sunshine galore at the Ole Miss Union Square campus and looking again at some quiet conditions across much of the area so far. No problems at all. Lots of sunshine in and around the area mixed in with a few clouds and you can see people walking and bike riding through the area looking back toward the Grove on the Ole Miss campus. Lots of sunshine this morning as school gets underway at Heidelberg Elementary in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Likewise, plenty of sun mixed with a few clouds and a lot of jet contrails at Power Center Academy in Memphis. Olive Branch camera from former mayor of Olive Branch, Sam Reichard. And the camera from just the back area of City Hall showing some more of those clouds drifting on through. Quiet morning at Old Miss Track and Field camera and looking again at a few areas of joggers and strollers early this morning. Beautiful new facilities. Everything's been upgraded quite nicely. And a view from sunlight this morning around Sanatobia, Mississippi. Construction ongoing at Ranger 2015's webcam. Again, also from the Weather Underground Network there. Matthew is, again, the big weather story of the day. And if you have not heard anything from last night, we have been looking again at this storm uh, continuing to stay very much on the strong side. This is a Category 4 storm, winds of 145 miles per hour, and we'll continue to monitor this as it goes throughout the rest of the day, going to continue to make its way back to the north. The track of the storm has been wandering over the last few days. It was going relatively back toward the west, continually and steadily going back to the west over the last few days, and then it just sort of slows down and tries to figure out which way it's going, and finally making its way back toward the north at this point, which is taking it back to between Haiti and the area close to Cuba at this time, very close to the southeastern tip of Cuba, right around Guantanamo Bay, and unfortunately Haiti getting hit with some powerful winds and could be looking at a year's worth of rainfall in just a few hours. We'll know more about what's going on with the Hurricane Hunter aircraft uh, coming up here within the course of the next hour or so as that begins to drop more information to the National Hurricane Center and placing that information as much as we can get from that Hurricane Hunter aircraft. We've got gusts of 135, 140 miles per hour into and around that area. And I'm going to continue again to see the possibility of more problems with this storm. Gusts of 175 miles per hour with the storm system have been noted and we'll continue to see that as it goes up into the Bahamas and it looks like it's going to be a direct strike over the Bahamas relatively soon. By tomorrow morning it will have left Cuba heading to the northwest and that will take it again basically right over the Bahamas no real escape from this one. Now, over the last few days, we were looking at this storm system taking more of a track heading back to the almost due north, a little bit more to the north-northeast. Unfortunately, at this time, that does not appear to be the case. And the storm track, the latest one, is taking it very close to the coastline of eastern Florida. So that is something that we're going to have to watch very carefully. Now, if you're heading anywhere in this particular area, 
anywhere between Miami and I would say all the way back up to DC. This is something that you're going to have to watch out for as the storm system begins to get a little bit closer to the coastline and shovels a lot of water on shore between Miami and the Chesapeake Bay area over the next few days, including the possibility of very heavy winds looking at those wind possibilities making their way toward the Miami coast area, southeast Florida, by the time we work our way toward Wednesday afternoon. Overnight into Thursday afternoon, the winds really start to increase and continue over the Bahamas. Very strong winds heading on through, and numbers again increasing as we go toward early Friday morning just off the coast of Miami and up the coastline this thing goes. So if you have any plans again but traveling between Miami and say the Carolinas or DC, we're going to be looking at stronger wind gusts moving into that particular area. So I would think about canceling, postponing if at all possible. You do not want to be uh, heading into anything in the way of a storm system that is going to be causing a lot of problems. So if you have any plans to be traveling from Memphis anywhere again up the coastline, Jacksonville, back down towards Savannah, the Carolinas and the Outer Banks, and all the way back up to the Chesapeake Bay area, now would be the time to be thinking about making certain that you have another plan to visit somewhere else if at all possible or delay your de your departure if at all possible because this is not something you want to get stuck in as the storm system gets a little bit closer to being up the coast. Here in the south we've got the opposite problem we've got an elevated fire risk dry conditions across the mid-south we've had very little rainfall since august and we could use some more we only received a two-thirds of an inch in september and we have little of anything to show for october already we do not have any burn bans in arkansas and tennessee we have a dozen counties in mississippi now under burn bans including the areas uh, in and around Tippa and Panola counties in the News Channel 3 viewing area that are now under burn bans. And more may be coming throughout the rest of the day today. We'll bring those to you as we get them. But information right now basically says that you need to be very careful with anything involving fire or flame. Chances of rain today basically zip, not looking at anything in the way that's going to help us cool things off either. Temperatures will be going above normal highs by lunchtime and should be back in the mid to upper 80s by the time we work our way into the this afternoon and this evening. Temperatures cooling off through News Channel 3 at 10 back in the lower 70s and heading for the mid to upper 60s for low temperatures as we get into very early on Wednesday morning. Not seeing too much in the way of relief from the heat temperatures today well above normal upper 80s to around the lower 90s today, tomorrow and into Thursday. So a very warm spate of days for the Mid-South area. Minor storm system crosses through the area Friday into Saturday that could give us a stray shower or thunderstorm. Most of what we're going to be looking for is going to be isolated activity at best and not much more than that. We'll see some much improved temperatures Saturday into Sunday. Cooler as well. Sunday morning could see numbers back in the mid to upper 40s or so. And as we go into the rest of the forecast, temperatures moderate by just a little bit. We'll be getting warmer again from Saturday onwards, but at least it won't be the blazing hot temperatures that we're going to see into the course of the next few days with numbers back into the lower 90s. International Space Station will be flying overhead later on tonight, fading in from the west at about 717 and fading out to the northeast very close to the horizon. You're going to need something unobstructed by buildings or trees, something you can see very clearly. And again, that should be taking place tonight about 717, rising in the west-northwest and fading to the north-northeast. Fog, a problem this morning. Not so much looking at a problem into tomorrow morning. Matter of fact, little, if anything, expected in the way of fog problems as dry, stable conditions continue across much of the area. Tonight at Benton County Courthouse in Ashland, Mississippi, on Ripley Avenue, the National Weather Service will be holding its latest severe weather spotter training course. That will be at 6.30 p.m., totally free, paid for by your town tax dollars, good opportunity to learn more about what to do for severe weather purposes. This Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in Savannah, Tennessee at Fire Department Station Number 12 for Hardin County. That's at 90 Walnut Street in Savannah. And it'll be at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday. Great opportunity to learn more there. Tishomingo County at Iuka, Mississippi next Tuesday and around the area of next Thursday, next Tuesday after that, Madison County in Jackson, Tennessee at the EOC for Madison County at Grady Montgomery Drive. Chester County after that, fire station number one, and that'll be held on Thursday the 20th. Great opportunity to learn more. And if you're heading downtown Memphis to watch the Ducks, it's going to be warm out there, so dress cool. The Ducks will have their air conditioning in the fountain. You're going to be able to cool off when don't overheat yourself heading out the door. More on my forecast available at Bob and Josh, a 730 
And you can find out more, again, uh, listening to Yahoo Sports Radio, so more information available there. We'll keep you updated on Matthew throughout the rest of the day and have more details on your complete forecast coming up tonight. Questions, concerns, ideas, austin.onic at wrg.com. That's it for the latest edition of News Channel 3's video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining me.